Good afternoon. I'm Christine Taylor Lewis. And it appears that the heavy March winds are having a good time in this area. So we will hope for the best today. Now, on behalf of the Afro-American Historical Association of Fauquier County, I thank you for joining us and welcome you to this, our 25th in a series of conversations with family historians and others who share their genealogy research or provide us with information related to local African Americans and their history. Part of our mission at AAHA is to collect, document, preserve, and share our national history with a focus on the African American experience in Fort Care in neighboring counties. We hope that these virtual events were able to remind you of the richness and the unique history and culture of local African Americans. To give a little background, the virtual genealogy and local history series, which you are now attending, had its debut last year on January 11, 2022. These twice a month Tuesday events were born out of AAHA's desire to make use of social media as much as possible during the time that many people were still isolated and we were close to the public because of the uncertainty about COVID's duration. Now that the virus is significantly, significantly under control and people are very much um, out and about, AAHA will discontinue this series of virtual events. However, these will, um, there will be other such events as time goes on. And these events will uh, discontinue at the end of March, at the end of this month. So we highly encourage you to continue visiting our website at aaha4care.org or stop by our resource center at 4243 Loudoun Avenue in the Plains, Virginia. We are open Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You'll find that both our resource center in the Plains and our website contain an enormous amount of information that will be of interest to historians, genealogists, educators, students, and anyone else interested in our nation's history or our local African-American history and culture. We take this opportunity to thank you for your continued support and feedback related to these events. We want to especially thank the many special guests who joined us bi-monthly to share the genealogies and family histories or to present information and images that tell the stories of the four care African American experience that many of us would not have known otherwise. We also invite you to our Facebook page each Thursday for a brief history of the African American schools in four care County that served the community prior to integration in the 1960s. Yesterday, AAHA began a daily feature on Facebook called Snippets from the Circuit. And the Circuit is a newspaper, an African-American newspaper that was published in Catholic Virginia from 1937 to 1954. So check us out every day on Facebook. Now, March is International Women's History Month. Since 1987, the United States has formally recognize the enormous contribution of women to history, culture, and society. Today, we want to honor and acknowledge our co-founders, Karen Hughes White and Karen Ken Lavore, who organized the Afro-American Historical Association of Fauquier County in May of 1992. The 2023 theme is celebrating women who tell our stories. This theme recognizes women past and present who have been active in, 
active in all forms of media and storytelling, including print, radio, TV, stage, screen, uh, blogs, podcasts, news, and social media. Today's guest is a dear friend who has been telling our stories through Christian dramatization and choreography for many, many years. Deaconess Barbara Newman was born in Winchester, Virginia to Emily and George Kaysen. She was educated in Fauquier County Schools and attended Northern Virginia Community College in Loudoun County, where she studied computer systems, architecture, and programming. She is a member of the Mount Morris Baptist Church of Hume, Virginia, where she serves as deaconess. She resides in Warrington with her husband of 46 years, Deacon David Newman. They have three children, the Reverend Evan Newman, whose wife is Joey, and twin daughters, Andrea Newman and Candice Cradle, whose husband is Marvin. She also has twin grandsons, Marcellus and Demetrius Newman. Deaconess Newman, also known as BJ, uses her creative gifts to write and produce Christian plays and direct a dance group of Christian ladies called the Grannies for Christ. Hello, Sister Newman. Good morning, good evening. Hi, Sister Christine. Thank you so much for joining us. We're so happy, truly happy to have you with us today. I'm glad to be here. I'm happy to be here for such a great and honored um, um, opportunity. Good, because there's so much I like to know. And uh, we just want to know how your ministry got started and emerged into such a successful production. Mm -hmm. So let's just start from the beginning. Okay. Now, when did you first notice that you have a talent for creative writing? Um, well, I don't know if I ever noticed I had a talent for it, but I love writing. I always have loved writing. Um, and even when I was in school, I never really gave it much thought, never really thought about it. You know, didn't give it any, any thought at all. It was just something that I love to do. Well, the talent is certainly there. Um, do you ever perform as, did you ever perform as an actor in plays um, during your school days? Um, not, not really. I was always too shy. I didn't like being in front of people. Um, I was in normal plays like everybody else, um, like Christmas plays and, and things like that, but nothing out of the ordinary. I was always the one um, hiding behind the other people because I was so shy. <laughs> okay. Well, for many years, the Northern Virginia community has enjoyed your Christmas plays based on the life and times of your leading character, BJ, mm -hmm. who is a staunch, Bible-toting, church-growing woman. So how long have you been writing, casting, directing, and producing Christian plays? Um, my, my first play, I believe, was in 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, it was at my home church, Mount Morris. And I do want to say that back then, I was the only actor i played all the parts you know the the men the women the boys the girls i did it all and they seemed to like it so uh and they wanted more so i did about maybe three or four more plays like that before expanding and adding others that's marvelous that you were a one act player <laughs> yes <laughs> And what was it that motivated you to share your special gifts with the public? Um, well, how I got started or motivated was, uh, you're going to love this. We used to have um, a women's group where we'd get together once a month at the church and we'd have some young ladies sometimes that would come in and, and uh, join with us. But we talked about all sorts of things. Uh, well, one day the question or the topic came up uh, that said, would, would you tell your best friend if her husband was cheating on her? 
Mm. So that started a landslide of discussion. I mean, it just went on. And, and the thing is, I couldn't believe that uh, everyone didn't think about it or feel the way I felt about that. Um, I mm. thought my answer, I thought I had it. I thought I knew. And I kept thinking about this thing when I went home and I was thinking about it. And I said, Lord, could I be wrong in how I'm thinking about this? Mm. And um, and then I, I was thinking so much about it and I realized that these things really happen in real life, in the real world. Um, so God started speak to, speaking to me during the middle of the night. And I got to emphasize that because always in the middle of the night, he mm. showed me what I needed to do to present real world, real situations uh, in a visual way. Mm -hmm. And then he me to make sure I ask questions to clarify and make sure everybody understood at the end of the place and also add scriptures that would indicate what God would do or have us do or say in those situations. And years later, he's still giving me the vision of what he wanted to have presented to his people. But mm -hmm. that's pretty much how I got motivated was from that women's group and that mm -hmm. discussion had my, got my wheels turning. Wow, that's an amazing story. And it shows that um, it's a true calling. Yes. You have a direct calling. Mm -hmm. So tell me, how many plays have you written all together? And among them, um, how many have you presented before audiences? Um, well, every one that I've written, I have performed before audiences, um, and some of them have, I've done like a couple of times, one, a couple of the plays I've done like three times at different locations, but basically about, uh, 50 plays. Whoa. So how do you come up with the, uh, the various plots and the themes for your plays? Okay. Um. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about this. Give me about a minute because this is where the, okay, this is where God, um, this is where he gets the glory. And I, I, and without this little testimony part of it, there would be no plays. Um, I would never, I want you to know, I never picked what was going to be written for any play. I, I couldn't do that. Someone would come up to me and ask me, would I do a play for them? And I would pray and I would ask the Lord what he wanted me to present to uh -huh. those particular people. And at night, again, always at night in the wee hours in the morning, it would come to me. I could see it clearly what I should write. Um, he would give it to me during that time and, mm -hmm. um, and, to, make, and to know that it was him giving it to me after each play. Um, the folk that that play was presented to they would always, someone would come to me and say, I or we needed that. And so mm -hmm. many times other people would come and say, can you please, please, please bring that, that particular play to our church? Um, for example, one time, um, you're going to love this. One time I um, had someone uh, wrote a play that someone got offended that because someone sat in their seat at their church. Mm -hmm. And again, I had no idea that this was or could be a problem, but um, Sister Christine, I found out that that's a problem and a thing in many churches. Yes. And yes. God had me put that particular part in that particular play. And the thing is, the play yes. wasn't even about that, but that's mm -hmm. what God wanted me to put in there. And I'm yes. telling you, so many people came to me saying, could you please, please, uh, bring that to my church. Mm. So from that, I, I started to know and understand that when folk can see a certain thing um, visually, mm -hmm. change their mind, you know, it helps them to think about things differently. And um, for example, in this particular play, new, a new person walks into the church, they don't know that they're not supposed to sit in the second row from the left side, two doors down from the back door. You know, that's, <laughs> yeah, all right. That. So when you present that visually right. and talk about it in the discussion, like, and I'm going to stop right here. The play is for the people. The discussion yes. is for me because I love that part. I love the discussions afterwards because during the discussions, 
I would get educated because yeah. I find out that there are different point of views out there. Yeah. That's how I would learn. Um, so through these discussions that things would just come out and, and I was always so amazed at how people thought about things. Um, for example, one time my own mother was at one of my plays and she told me um, and, uh, about one of the scenes that jumped out to her. And mm -hmm. I looked at her and I said, what? I said, that was a point of view that I never had even thought of, but it mm -hmm. was just something different you know, because God lets yeah. people see things the way he wants them to see it. And That's so the true. thing that I learned from these discussions and solutions that God had for them was that God deals with people in all kinds of ways. That's and true. not just ways that we think of or know of, but That's true. because he knows each one of us. That's he right. knows each of us need. And somehow God would amazingly place these little um i call them spiritual nuggets mm -hmm. little spiritual nuggets all throughout the place for us to feast on and to think about when we're confronted with yes. these real world situations and um he would touch god he would touch people through their emotions mm -hmm. doing the uh one time my father-in-law told me that he cried mm -hmm. all the way through one of the plays and i i said why and he said because it was so real and it just yeah. shook him to his core. And yeah. so many people would come and tell me stories like that after the plays, things that I knew nothing about. And I'll just tell you just one little thing that's personal to me. I was sitting one day and I, I'm gonna try not to cry because it always touches me. I was sitting on the stage behind the curtain and I was watching the folk out on the stage uh, perform and they were communicating the message that God had shown me mm. and thing just touched me and I was sitting there and and they were doing it and 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 it was being communicated and I just started to cry because mm. it was so real I could see God's hand moving in it and it just blessed me and yeah. so like I said I I never pick what I'm going to write um, I always leave that to the Lord and he always delivers. He delivers. And I just get up and start writing what I've seen or heard <laughs> and, um, and then watch the plays encourage and inspire so many people to right. tears, to laughter or whatever. Yeah. See, when the spirit of the message would start to come through the cast and the singers, yeah. I was just so blessed in that. Yes, yes. So I can tell from the stories and all that you presented that it truly is a confirmation. Um, yes. I did give this ministry to you and you've done a marvelous job by Jane. Truly, truly I. Yes. But let, let me ask you this. Uh, how do you select your characters? Um, now, this is one that God had to work with me. <laughs> he had to work with me on it because it was scary and uncomfortable. It was that type of thing to me. Um, when it was time for me to expand, because like, like I told you, I was the only one doing the plays and everything. And it became the time I knew God was telling me this, but it meant that I would have to go out and start asking people to right. be a part of this thing that yeah. I was uncomfortable. And un I didn't have many, I didn't have much confidence in my own abilities. Yes. Um, but I got real nervous about it. And, uh, but what God, what God was leading me to do, I continued to follow him. Mm -hmm. But what he would have me do is write the plays without anyone in mind. Uh -huh. You talk about nerves. Oh my goodness. I pleaded with God, <laughs> please give me, give me the names or faces of someone right. who can write about them or write around them. And each time sister Christine, he'd say no. He'd uh -huh. say no. So I had to learn to just trust him and uh, start writing. And then mm -hmm. and only then would the names and the faces start to come to me after mm -hmm. I had writing the plays or was a good ways into getting it um, completed. Mm -hmm. So I would count and believe that he did this. Yes. Would focus on the message he wanted to have communicated. Mm -hmm. Writing something that would fit the performers, 
Right. Right. No. My nerves would be shot because I wanted to know who was going to be doing this stuff. But I had to learn to trust him. And every time he would provide the correct actors and singers. But I've I've got to, can I tell you this one little story real quick? Yeah, tell me real quick. Um, Early on, um, maybe around the fourth or fifth play, Mm -hmm. I was still racked with nerves, stressed. I'm I'm hoping it was a lack of faith, but I was just, was so nervous. And I was on my way to church one day. Um, You want to go to the next, next slide? I was on my way to the church one day to do the play. And I was praying to God. I said, God, please just be with me. Be with me, please, God. I was nervous as all could be. I was just having a, an attack. And I think I might have been getting on his nerves. I don't know. But then I looked up. And this particular card that I hope the audience can see it, that particular card was in front of me. And you talk about God speaking. That tag <laughs> says, just act. Just that was God. That was God all the way speaking to me. Oh, I was I was so moved. I was moved to tears again. I'm a cry baby. That's okay. That was awesome. That was that was a beautiful story, and that's what you call a divine act. Which yes, is, it truly was. Well, do you um do you have regulars among your cast? Um. Yes, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, as time went on, I learned, I had to, I just learned to trust God in that whole area. And he allowed me, showed me how to um, put together an actor's deal. And those are people oh. that you could call on to do certain parts and things like that. And from there, he grew up the characters. I say grew them up because they would be in most of the plays, the character of Beulah May. Mm-hmm. who used to be played by Michelle Shines, but in later years is now played by my sister, Linda Kaysen, and she does a superb job. Somebody, I throw this in there. Somebody told me that she's she's better actor than you. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's like, <laughs> She's good. <laughs> Linda, but, Linda, she is right there. And it's so, it just, you know, but she does, she pours a heart into it, and the character Zudi, the play mm-hmm. by my daughter, daughter-in-law, Joy Newman, she yeah. is a hoot. A hoot and a holler, I tell you, but, and then DJ and other characters kind of grew up from that. But I, I just got to say, I have been blessed, very blessed uh-huh. to have so many talented people be a part of this ministry. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to do a name dropping here, like Taryn Weaver, Zondra yeah. Carmichael, mm-hmm. Doofy Swan. I don't know if you remember her. Yeah, um, uh, Anita Gaskins, Alma Tynes, um, mm-hmm. the singers like Darlene Slaughter and Greg Fields. Um, mm-hmm. That's just to name a few. I mean, but uh, from all over the county and adjoining counties. Um, also, like your husband, he was a part of it. He and was, Reverend, well, yeah. Reverend Green and even you. Um, yeah, that's I, right. I won't, I won't tell you how your husband and Reverend Green acted up behind the stage curtain one time, but but they <laughs> they were they were having a blast. I but really I, I thank God for sending so many to be a part of this ministry. Oh, that is so beautiful, Sister Noah. That is so moving, just heartwarming. And I remember when uh, Reverend Lewis was in that first play. I think it was about the chains. Yeah, no more chains. No more chains, yes. Yeah. 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 So about the theatrical scenery, the props and the uh, backdrops that have traveled with your plays, each production is unique in its own presentation. So I'm wondering if you also have a hand in creating the background scenery, such as um, church windows, living rooms, et cetera. And I'll show you a couple examples. Um, I'm going to tell you, girl, I have been blessed in everything. God is so good to me in in this area, the props and things as well. My husband, David, is a master at doing these props. Um, That he has so much creative talent uh, in this area. And I, and, and um, as always, I got a little story. I got to tell you the story about, um, uh, one of the horses that he made for me. That, <laughs> horse, that horse was so real looking. 
I came home from work, from work one day and I went down through the basement where he was down there with the horse making this horse. And I walked in and I had to, I had to take a double look. That thing looked like it, it looked so real. It was life size and everything. I thought he had brought a horse into our basement. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, what he had done was taken, and you're going to love this, he had taken my, and all the women will understand this, he had taken my weave hair, you know, my wig hair, okay. <laughs> and he put it on the horse for the horse's mane on the back of his neck, and he had a beautiful yeah. long tail, curly <laughs> tail. I laughed so hard, <laughs> but it worked, it worked, oh. you know, and um, I found after the play, people were over there taking pictures with the horse they left me standing over in the corner <laughs> they were taking pictures with this horse um and also he created that little red car as you see in the um video that you're showing uh, i call it my chrysler 300 and it also sold the show and people were taking pictures with it and uh, had ministers reverends get in the car this is sister barbara <laughs> gaskins sitting in the car waving but it it stole the show Mm -hmm. um he and andrea my daughter they mm -hmm. were my prop makers and um they have so much god-given talent and i thank him and them for it they do they do because i've noticed um and, and mm -hmm. others have noticed when we go to various plays oh look at the background look at the uh, the, the props back there i wonder who did that and i learned that it was your husband and mm -hmm. I, I remember you talking about the horse was that the same horse that you used in no more chains Yes. yes. I remember yes. Uh, Minister yes. Bob Robinson was on there then. And Reverend Lewis and I just laughed and laughed at how <laughs> she was guiding that horse and galloping and just making it look like it was would move. And mm -hmm. uh, she promised to show us how she did that. <laughs> but I, I remember that horse very well. So yeah. yeah. My husband is truly gifted and, and talented in his own right. And uh, such a uh, blessed compliment um, mm -hmm. to your plays so mm -hmm. we want to just give him a little shout out yes <laughs> thank you Deacon. thank you so much mm -hmm. now of all the plays that you've written and produced down through the years is there one that would um you would consider your favorite and if so why um uh, I, I thought about it. I went back and I looked through all the titles and everything. And, and, and I have to be honest, I, I really, uh, I have to say that I can't think of one that is my favorite um, because they all touched on things that was near and dear to my heart. Um, but, um, but I will say that there were some that were funnier than, than others. Um, for example, like when Linda, uh, my sister fell over uh, some chairs and made all of this noise. The audience just, they just all <laughs> laughing. And then the, one time I was having to grab after some lady that was running away from me and I grabbed her hair and a wig came off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, was that intended? And it was like, oh my gosh. And then um, the, the one with the fake mouse that, I, that was in okay. the audience. And I had to go out and grab the mouse from under the seat and the people in that area would fall over in the seat, either screaming or laughing because they thought it was a real mouse. But that that was funny. And what God had done over time, was he allowed me to start doing shorter, shorter skits. Mm -hmm. And there were at least two that I really enjoyed. And they both were about ushers. Mm -hmm. And uh, one was called Hold My Fans, as you can see that that uh, yes. graphic that you've got there. And right. the other was the singing ushers. Now, right. they that was really funny. But again, um, I really can't say I have a favorite uh, mm -hmm. because I guess it's like trying to pick one of your children mm -hmm. and say, which one of fav is your favorite? You can't because right. they are all God given. That's so true. you can't. Mm -hmm. Very right. There's no way that you can choose one of your own over another. Yes. But as we look at um, these images and I see the singing ushers. So isn't that um, Linda on the left? Yes, that's Linda on the left. Is mm -hmm. that you on the right? 
Me and Linda, yes, we we aged ourselves quite a bit. <laughs> and I still see your resemblance. See, so you, can, you, you and Linda can see how you will look maybe 20 years from now. Yes, <laughs> that's how we're going to look in the future. <laughs> right, 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 right. Especially those shoes. I mean, <laughs> I know you're going to need those shoes for sure. Yeah, those shoes were a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a beautiful, this is a funny and wonderful image. Yeah, I'm sure that was a good play. I'm sorry I missed that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, based on the feedback, is there one play in particular that um, you would say and would have been an audience favorite? Um, again, I, I really can't say because each of the plays were unique in their own way and they always always seem to hit the mark for that particular audience okay. and the feedback the feedback was always awesome always glorified god so I, again i i'm not sure i can't say okay so now let's take a moment to talk about bj the main character in your plays how does she emerge to become the feisty, no-nonsense, comical character that she portrays? Yes, my BJ, BJ, BJ. Um, yes, that she, that character emerges as the God-fearing, feisty, got to say, macadamia nut-loving cookie eater, uh, it, and that all of that was just a natural flow for me. The feisty, comical, cookie lover, and yeah. not afraid. To yeah. use the word of God in any situation. She sure is, and, and, and neither are you. Now, did you model her after anyone you know besides yourself in your life? Yes, yes, I did. And it's probably going to come to a lot of people a shock because no one has known this but me. Um, she was modeled after me and my mom. Okay. Um, the macadamia nut cookie part, it's all me. That that's all me. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, the other parts, the feisty, um, yeah. no nonsense, comical, God fearing, they are all parts of me and my mom. I just love your mom, Miss Emily. Have you ever written or produced anything without BJ? No, no, BJ has been a, a part of every last one of them, blessed and highly favored. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So, um, do you have any plays currently in the works? Or any plans for any upcoming performances? Um, yeah, as with everything, we had to take a break due to the pandemic, but I am in talks with someone right now about doing one later in the summer. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's really good to know, and I'll certainly be looking out, as I'm sure some of others in our audience. Yes. Now, moving on to an area in which you used your gifts as a choreographer to mm -hmm. further tell our stories. Let's uh, talk some about the Grammys for Christ. Mm -hmm. The Grammys. I remember some years ago when I saw a video on Facebook and it was a group of church women all dressed in white and they were doing a choreograph interpretation of that gospel hit by Regina Bell called God is Good. Mm -hmm. And you asked if anyone would be interested in trying to learn those steps. And I said, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, can you pick up on the story from there and tell how the Brandis for Christ uh, came into existence? Yep, I sure can. The grannies, they are my heart. Oh my gosh, these women, I just love them to pieces. Um, the grannies is another God sent blessing. Um, but I got to tell you something, Sister Christine, you encouraged me to go forward with that, with that whole idea. And I'm, I know, I feel in my heart of hearts that I would not have done it. I would not have moved forward if you hadn't said yes. So you encouraged me to do that. And um, after we got started, I sent out a notice, notices to a few ladies that seemed to fit the spirit of the dance at that time. 
And they all said yes. And so that let me know that God was in this as well. And over time, by the grace of God, it continued to grow. Well, I'll tell you some things, uh, Sister Newman. When I said yes, I had no idea that you would uh, want to have a performance. So that just <laughs> reminds me that God indeed was in the mix. In the midst, yes. He was. He truly was. So I, I thank you for that. And I, I'm very humbled to move oh. So thank you so much for sharing. But we had fun as friends. And it was very, and I'm sure it still is. So we are, because I'm an honor already granny now. But uh -huh. we are a very close knit group of women. When one hurts, we all hurt. And we all oh. gather to support one another. When mm -hmm. one is enjoying and having fun and being blessed in some way and celebrating, then we all share with one another. So that's a marvelous uh, group mm -hmm. of, of women to be in fellowship with. Right? So I thank mm -hmm. you for that. And I've made some very dear friends who weren't already dear friends uh, after mm -hmm. having uh, become one of the grandest of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm. I ended up dropping out about a year because of issues with my rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. But the group has grown from um, the original six to how many dancers all together now? Um, God sent about maybe 10. Uh, at one point, there was 11 women all together. But oh. I, do, I do have to tell you this. Um, he knew in his infinite wisdom like he always knows that because we are grannies um yes. our, our hips our elbows our, our rotator cuffs and things like that is going to act up so um and because of that that's why he sent enough women um so we can switch in and out and uh, so we right. would have a, a solid six seven or eight uh, when we did go out to perform well, that's a marvelous thing. That's a marvelous thing. Um, mm -hmm. Just to confirm, you know, God always supplies. You know, yes. He, supplies he does. So what other songs did you choreograph um, for the Grammys? Um, besides God is good, that's our mainstay, right? We yeah. did I Will Trust in the Lord. And mm -hmm. I woke up this morning with uh, my, my, my mind stayed on Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I remember that. Right? Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> hallelujah. Um, do the granny still perform? Well, unfortunately, pandemic had to slow our steps a little bit, but mm -hmm. I will be out real soon to them to see if they still are interested. But I will be leaving that in God's hands as well. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. So now, on, um, moving away from the Grammys, on uh, September 9th, 2017, you received an Excel Award from the Women in Worship Ministries during a mm -hmm. celebration that was held in Fredericksburg. Mm -hmm. So tell me briefly who the Women in Worship Ministries are and um, why you were selected for this award. Oh, okay. Um, first, I want to say that the president and CEO is a very sweet and busy lady and a friend of mine, Sister Nan Butler Roberts. I don't, I don't know yeah. if you know. And yeah. the Sister CFO Nan. is, uh, I mean, that lady is, she's really busy. I mean, and, and she's just involved in so many things. And then the CFO is Reverend Patricia Wormley. Yes. Um, and when I found out, what I found out about the women in worship is that they were founded in 2009 mm -hmm. by three women who combined their talents and their abilities um, to do a women's conference from 2006 to 2008. And it was so successful. All these conferences were so successful and in high demand, God revealed to them that uh, to move it uh, moved the vision from a women's conference to a women's ministry mm -hmm. that would provide an opportunity for more women and young ladies who mm -hmm. are all walking in their destinies for greater kingdom building mm -hmm. to draw 
house of the God and the fellowship with one another and be recognized and honored as women of God walking in their calling. Mm -hmm. uh, two of the mottos that I found relevant for the women in worship was um, they basically celebrate women in history mm -hmm. and those making history and believing that one woman can make a difference but together, honey, we can rock the world. So that's, <laughs> that's the model. I see them working it that way. But um, how I got selected to re receive such an honor again was all, all God, all God. The organization looked out, uh, looked for women and young ladies nationally, regionally, um, and locally who has been, you know, who has made an impact on their community through their work spiritually or professionally, and then honor them with the Excel Honors Award. And the year I was selected, there were two national honorees, seven regional and local honorees, 10 high school and college girls recognized as Generation Next. And the category that I was honored for was arts in ministry. And I have to tell you, I have to tell you this, it was truly an honor and a pleasure to be there just to acknowledge God's work and what he had accomplished through the plays. That's so true. And this is truly an outstanding uh, group of women who have come mm -hmm. together with this ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they first had conferences, I had occasion to attend a couple of them. But down through the years, they have brought in huge names um, from out of the area, international or national names uh, mm -hmm. of women who would come in and uh, head the conferences. So mm -hmm. they are truly a fine example before those of us who would like to further our ministry. So uh, yes. I, I thank them for, um, for what they're doing and uh, mm -hmm. wish them mm -hmm. the best as they go along. But as I look at this, um, Photograph. I noticed that um, is that you sitting on the first row on the uh, far right? Yep, that's me. <laughs> that's me. Taking this moment. Congratulations on that award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank awesome. you. So before we visit our chat room for questions or comments, is there anything else that um, you'd like to express about your ministry of uh, telling? Uh, women's stories from the point of view of a Christian dramatist and choreographer? Um, yeah, I'd just like to leave this word in passing as we, as we end, because um, it, it, is, it is a very touching and moving thing what God has done for me through these plays. And all I can say as a woman of God and as women of God, if he gives you a vision, even if it's outside of your comfort zone, like this was for me, I, I didn't want to speak in front of people. That was just not my thing, but he worked with me and he gave me a new direction and he blessed me through it all. But if God gives you a vision, yes. please, please take that step with him. Um, he won't let you down. Let him lead you. And I can't, I cannot stress this enough and um, the importance of remaining humble and always remember that it is his grace, his mercy, and he alone that deserves and gets all of the glory and the honor. Let him bring you before great men and audiences. Um, and I will end with this. The scripture says, and I'm gonna cheat here because I gotta read it. The scripture says, Proverbs 18, 16. Mm -hmm. A man's gift will make room for him and will bring him before great men. And paraphrasing on Proverbs 27, 2, let others praise you. You don't have to go around tooting your own horn. You have to put, let others praise you. Um, and Romans 13, 2 says, let others honor you. Let them give honor where honor is due. And because of these scriptures, I humbly accepted the honor of nurturing the gift that God gave me. And I thank him from the bottom of my heart for that. 
because I know where it comes from. And it's not from me, but from him. So God bless you. God bless you. Well, thank you so much. It was beautiful, uh, encouraging, inspiring words of wisdom. And we certainly know where your gift comes from. And we thank God for it. Lord. Yes. So at this point, I'm going to move to the chat room, I think. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, for those who are viewing, uh, we have um, Diggins Newman's uh, her email, which is newmanspad at aol.com. Mm -hmm. And her phone number, which is 540-349-2378 if anyone desires to contact her. Okay. And you have one comment from Angela, which says, just curious, did you attend elementary and high school in Fort Care? Yes, yes. I'll say all my education in my uh, elementary and high school was Fort Care County schools. Okay, so which schools did you go to? Um, oh, Lord, 50 years ago, uh, Northwestern Elementary. Okay. For Care High School. Okay. So you didn't go to Taylor. You were out. Uh, you came a little later. Yeah. I'm so young. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so at uh, this point, that's all that we see in the chat room. By Dick and Ms. Newman, I just want to thank you so very much again for um joining us today and although you, you don't think you're a speaker um you you uh, truly blessed us today you truly did and i want to thank you i do want to thank you for inviting me to giving me an opportunity when i get a chance to talk about god it's an opportunity i love it i love it i love it so thank you so much and if 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 you are or Anyone at the uh, museum there, the AAHA, can use use help from with my ministry. Just let me know, and I'll be there for you. I will be there, Lord's will. Thank you so much. We truly, truly appreciate your your offering your your services, your gifts, mm -hmm. and your talent. And uh, we at AAHA uh, want to wish you the very best in all of your future productions. So thank you again, and, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And to those, before we close, to those who are here, our next event will be on Tuesday, March 28th. And uh, as I mentioned, it will be our last event, our closing event. And again, we thank you so very, very much for your support um, um, in this um, project or the series of events. But next Tuesday, uh, beginning at one o'clock, yours truly, Christine Taylor Lewis, will be the guest of our director, Karen Hughes White. And I will be talking about uh, my family genealogy, the Taylor and the Jones family, um, some of the research that I've been able to um, gather. So we truly, um, Thank you for visiting us, and we hope to see you on Tuesday, March 28th at 1. And again, thank you so much, Dick and Ms. Newman. God okay. bless you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're closing. Okay.